let's take a moment to understand what a software engineer is, so we can sort of get a better idea of the big picture of computer programming in general. And you might be thinking, well, don't software engineers just write software? And yes, that's true, but there's so much more to that story, so let's try and dissect it for our own understanding. Engineering in general is, in a barebone sort of way, the application of scientific and mathematical principles along with experimentation to the design and creation of things, whether it's a civil engineer designing a high-speed rail system, or an electrical engineer designing a solar power system, or an aerospace engineer designing a new Boeing aircraft, the bottom line is that something's being innovated, designed, and built to solve some problem or fill some need. The interesting thing about software engineers, however, is that the things they create aren't as physically tangible as all these other realms of engineering. Software engineers are creating worlds that are governed by their own sets of rules and are powered by computer systems in order to solve problems much more efficiently than humans can do on their own. So here we have a list of the sort of roles a software engineer has to be able to assume in order to properly complete his or her job. This list is taken from the Java Methods textbook by Maria and Gary Litvin, and it really does a good job at putting into perspective the scope of a career in software engineering. Let's go through them, one by one, and get a better understanding of what each component really means. So, we said that software engineers are basically creating their own worlds that are powered by computer systems. These worlds need some sort of architecture in order to function properly, and as a result, the software engineer has to be the one to make sure that all the data and all the instructions in a software system are represented properly and efficiently. For example, let's consider Microsoft Word. I can type up some text in a Word document, I could add in some images, I can make hyperlinks, I could cut and paste chunks of my doc, I could export it as a PDF, I could send it to my printer, I could add comments. There are a lot of features and functions that need to happen in conjunction in order for Microsoft Word to be a useful program for me to use, and software engineers are the ones who are creating that architecture in the background so that can happen. Let's move on to the next point. When software engineers are solving problems, the solution isn't easy to find. For example, if an engineer at Lockheed Martin is designing some new tech that can detect missiles and other dangerous objects and deal with them accordingly, it's going to need a lot of different inputs from different sensors, and it'll need to take a lot of calculations to determine the best possible route to take. As a result, that engineer has to be able to write an algorithm to sort of quantitatively document this procedure that the computer software needs to go through. In general, an algorithm is a step-by-step -step recipe or set of instructions that dictates how a certain task should be done or how a certain problem should be solved. Well, how are these algorithms written? How is a computer program written? Computer programs are written in code, but more specifically in a programming language, and as a result, a programmer needs to be able to understand and use programming languages throughout their career. And it's not like you learn Java once and become a Java programmer for life. Depending on your job, your role in a company, or the project you're working on, you'll have to work with various programming languages throughout your life. So that's what this third point means. Syntax and style basically refers to the quote-unquote grammar of programming language. But keep in mind, what's more important is understanding the concepts of programming itself, and once you have that down, you'll be much more adaptable and flexible in learning the new programming languages you'll come across in the future. When you're writing code for programs, however, you're not just typing inside of a Microsoft Word document, your code needs to be written in a development environment, based on what language you're writing in and what task you're trying to accomplish, which we can think of as sort of a program inside of which we write our own programs. Software engineers need to know how to use these development environments and all of their tools. In addition to development environments, software engineers also need to know about available documentation, which is basically like reference books for code and programming, and reusable software components, which are chunks of code that are already written since they're used so often. These make writing new code much more efficient, since you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. You gather what's already been written and then build on top of that. Programs never work the first time though, and even if it works for a certain amount of time, you might find a bug or your users might report issues later down the road. This brings us to our next point. Software engineers also have to be able to debug their code. Basically, they have to be able to find and correct any errors in programs. At the end of the day, it's important to realize that software engineers aren't writing programs for other software engineers, they're writing them for everyday people, the quote-unquote users of these apps and programs and devices that use software in some way. Because of this, software engineers have to be careful to make sure that their programs are user-friendly, meaning it's logical and intuitive for ordinary people to use. When you open up Twitter or Google Maps or Amazon on your phone, you're usually only a few clicks away from what you want to do. 
Tap the search bar, click the messages icon, swipe to the home menu, scroll through your shopping cart. It's all very easy to use regardless of whether you've had the app for a day or for a year, update after update. Software engineers have to be the ones to create these user interfaces that seem so natural and easy to use every time we use these programs, and this includes things like the layout of buttons and screens, the colors and sounds, the different commands, and just the overall look and feel of the program in general. Software engineering is arguably the most rapidly changing field of engineering, if not the most rapidly changing field in general, and as a result of this, software engineers have to be able to constantly learn and apply new technical information. Whether it's new hardware developments, or new programming languages, or new algorithms and techniques, or new user demands, or new design aesthetics, software development is always changing, and software engineers have to be ready to keep up and constantly learn new things. So that's a lot of responsibilities. Like any field in the real world, software engineering requires an understanding of a lot more than just info you'd find in a textbook. It encompasses the development of system architectures, the creation of effective algorithms, fluency in programming languages, debugging of computer programs, understanding of development tools, and the ability to cater products to clients and users. The term software engineer itself is a big category of a lot of different types of jobs. Maybe you're a web developer, or a front-end, or a back-end, or a full-stack developer. Maybe you do iOS, maybe Android. Maybe you specialize in AI or machine learning. Maybe you do cybersecurity. You might emphasize in design. You might work on databases, or graphics, or embedded control systems, autonomous vehicles. There's a lot of different options. But at the end of the day, all these software engineers follow the same general set of principles in order to efficiently and effectively design solutions to problems with the helpful power of computers.